When you're a kid, all you care about is cereal, Pokemon trading cards, and cartoons. As an adult, you still care about those things, but in a more nostalgic way, right? Don't judge me. When an awesome animated series joins forces with the gaming industry, most of the time it's epic. There's just something about picking up a controller and manipulating your favorite cartoon character. It's exhilarating. Video games and cartoons are two of my favorite things, so today we take a look at the top 5 best video games based on cartoons. South Park The Stick of Truth is an RPG that released in 2014 and was developed by Obsidian Entertainment. Yep, the same guys that made Fallout New Vegas. Trey Parker and Matt Stone, the creators of South Park, were huge fans of Zelda, Earthbound, and Paper Mario. They wanted to make a game that looked exactly like the television show, but intertwined the elements of a role-playing game, and that's exactly what they did. The South Park boys worked exclusively on the project and pulled no punches when it came to off-color jokes and uncomfortable scenarios. As such, the game was subject to censorship in some regions because of the game's content that included abortions, alien anal probing, and Nazi imagery. Instead of cutting out those scenes completely, they implemented place cards that detailed everything that was censored. Despite those minor setbacks, the game released to high praise and favorable reviews. As of today, it is a commercial success, shipping over 5 million copies worldwide. I guess people love traversing the various obstacles found inside of the anal cavity of Mr. Slave. Ooh, Jesus Christ. In a world of race cars, lasers, and aeroplanes, your life can become a duck blur. So go ahead and sit yourself down and pick up the controller to play DuckTales the video game, based off of the hit Disney television show of the late 80s. Follow Scrooge McDuck as he travels to distant lands to acquire treasure and outwitting his rival, Flintheart Glomgold, to become the world's richest duck. The final boss fight is against Dracula Duck. When I saw this, I couldn't help but think that it was a subtle jab at the DuckTales rival show, Count Duckula. Anybody out there remember that show? After defeating the boss and finding the treasure, the game had three separate endings based on the amount of money Scrooge amasses. Your greedy little nephews chime in talking about, we help too. I know Scrooge was thinking, man, I've been hopping my ass on that cane for the last three months, and all you did was tell me where to find items, sitting around my big screen watching me count my money. Boy, if you don't get your ass the hell away from me right now. I'm the richest duck in the world. DuckTales was a commercial success, with the NES version selling approximately 1.7 million copies, and the Game Boy version sold a buttload as well. The game was such a hit that a remastered version was put out in 2013 and was just as good as the original. Playing this game was an awesome adventure that taught kids a valuable lesson on capitalism, placing the value of acquisitions over the well-being of others, all while exploiting the resources of indigenous lands and murdering anyone who stands in your way. In a tie for third place, we have The Simpsons Arcade Game of 1991 and The Simpsons Hit and Run of 2003. Sorry, couldn't pick just one. Okay, first let's talk about how cool the Simpsons arcade game was. It was pretty freaking epic for its time. The Simpsons arcade game was a side-scrolling beat-em-up that was playable up to four players. You are basically on a mission to save Maggie from the evil Mr. Burns. I would always choose Bart because, well, he had a skateboard, duh. Marge was equally powerful with her vacuum. When combined with Homer, they could execute an awesome cartwheel attack. The Simpsons arcade game was wickedly fun, and I needed a small loan of about a million dollars to keep pumping those quarters in. Simpsons Hit and Run was an awesome game with a deep narrative and immersive environment. Some describe it as the Grand Theft Auto of Springfield. The previous game, Simpsons Road Rage, was a glorified version of Sega's Crazy Taxi, but in this game, you could actually get out of the car and explore. For the first time, audiences got to discover all the fascinating aspects of The Simpsons' hometown, and that's what made it so fun. And of course, the show's side-splitting humor is still prevalent throughout the game. Uh, why didn't I know that showgirl last night was a guy? Hindsight's always 20-20. <laughs> Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? SpongeBob SquarePants, and he's got a game. Okay, so the same year that Simpsons Hit and Run came out, SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom hit the market with a very similar looking game style. 
In this game, you play as SpongeBob, Sandy the Squirrel, and Patrick to defend Bikini Bottom against the menacing invasion of robots created by Plankton. The game isn't really considered an open world format, but rather a 3D platformer, reminiscent of Mario 64 and Crash Bandicoot. The game was a huge success, selling well enough to earn the greatest hits version on the PS2. It was the winner of the Kids Choice Awards for Favorite Video Game. IGN rated it 7 out of 10, would play again, stating that the variety and general SpongeBob zaniness kept things fresh. Besides Mr. Krabs and Mermaid Man, all of the other characters are voiced by their original actors, which I believe adds to the charm of this game. Many consider this to be one of the greatest PS2 games ever made, and by many, I mean the thousands and thousands of SpongeBob SquarePants fans. The Adventures of Batman and Robin the Video Game was based off of the popular 90s animated television show. The show has been frequently ranked as one of the greatest animated television series ever created. Over its 85 episode run, it raked in loads of awards and consistently high ratings. So you know you have to bring your A game when it comes to making a video game about it. And boy did they. Now there's two versions of this game that came out, one for the Sega Genesis and one for the Super NES. This spot goes to the 1994 Super Nintendo version because it's just an all-around better game. Sorry Sega, you tried. Hold this L. This beat-em-up platformer allows Batman to punch and kick his enemies into oblivion. You also have an arsenal of gadgets and weapons at your disposal to dispel the scum of Gotham City. Okay, seriously though, look at this boss fight. Oh my god. I mean, the game has everything. Mind-challenging puzzles, awesome little cutscenes, the plant from Little Shop of Horrors, aerial Batmobile chase footage, and there's also the first time that you could throw a batarang at a girl's booby. Some people did criticize the fact that the game is called The Adventures of Batman and Robin, but didn't have a lot of Robin in it. But they failed to realize that the game was in development during the run of the first season of the show, which was called Batman the Animated Series. Plus, who the hell wants to play as Robin anyway? This is a Batman game. Don't be such a dick, Grayson. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to Arcade Cloud for more Top 5.